It's Manu. This is Janet, a six-year-old girl. Janet is very excited as she's starting her primary school today. Lucy, her mother, struggled to get her registered as she relocated to our town only two weeks ago when primary school registrations were already closed. After breakfast, Lucy drives Janet to her new school. Janet is happy to meet her new friends. Lucy can now go to work. At 1 p.m., Lucy is called by the school principal that Janet is sick. Lucy rushes to school. Lucy and the school nurse are allowed by the school principal to take Janet to the hospital of choice. Janet is brought to our pediatric emergency room. Upon arrival, the six-year-old girl is scratching her skin, worthless and crying. The school nurse report that symptoms started about one hour after lunch. That day, the school lunch was made of rice, beef, spinach, and a glass of milk was served to every child together with lunch. Lucy says that she forgot to mention to the school administration that two years ago, Janet was diagnosed with cow's milk allergy. On examination, Janet is restless, pain, with slightly elevated temperature, respiratory rate at 23, pulse rate at 100, and oxygen saturation at 93. Generalized halves are noted on Janet's skin. On auscultation, a slight wheezes is noted in both lungs. At the end, the cow's milk algae diagnosis is returned, and Janet is treated accordingly and successfully. The second story I'm going to tell you is about Kelly. Kelly is a 27-year-old woman, lawyer by profession. Kelly Squire is well known in our neighborhood. She loves jogging and swimming. She was anxiously brought to a hospital by global farming company agents presenting the following. Difficulty in breathing with loud voices, vomiting, and she was in coma, responding only to pain. Farmers who brought her Report that Kelly exceedingly disturbed a hidden beehive when she was running alongside the family. The bees swarmed for their, from the hives in overwhelming numbers, prompting Kelly to run to a nearby house. Kelly suddenly fainted when she was fighting with a colony of bees. Families immediately called the ambulance, and Kelly was urgently taken to an emergency room. On our examination, we noted a disseminated bee sting marks and very low blood pressure, fast heartbeat, and breathing difficulties with inaudible wheezes. In view of the context, Kelly was diagnosed with anaphylactic shock and we treated Kelly accordingly. Today, Kelly is happy and well. The third story is about little Mike, a seven months old boy. Presenting with sneezing, nasal blockage, runny nose. These symptoms are, are recurrent and worsens in the morning, at evening time, and when it's raining. After history taking and examination, Mike is diagnosed with infant allergic rhinitis. What Janet, Kelly, and little Mike have in common here is an allergy or allergic diseases, but in different presentations. Allergy or allergic diseases refers to an abnormal or exaggerated reaction to the body immune system to otherwise harmless foreign substances. This overreaction can also be called hypersensitivity. In this video, we'll use the two words with no differences, though allergy is usually used to describe symptoms and signs of the condition and hypersensitivity to describe the immunological process that occur in the body at the core of the allergic disease. Before we start, if not subscribed yet, please subscribe to our channel now and activate notifications. Do not forget to like and share our videos with friends. Thank you. Normally, your body immune system raises immune reactions to protect your body to harmful agents such as bacteria, viruses, parasite, but in normal situations, the body does not react to normal environmental substances. In people with allergies, however, the immune system also reacts to these substances 
producing allergic reaction. Any substance or product that can cause allergy is called an allergen. An allergen can be natural environment such as flowers, pollen, pet dander, dust mite, smoke particles, and so on. Food like eggs, milk, meats, and so on can also cause allergy. More details forward in this video. And some medications such as penicillin, sulfur drugs, anticonvulsants, aspirin, brufen, and other anesthetics and chemotherapy drugs can cause allergies. Though the cold weather is not a classical allergy, for some people an allergy to the cold is real. The allergy is called cold urticaria, and those who have it experience each eyes, redness, and swelling when directly exposed to the cold. Other types of allergy apart from the already mentioned cold urticaria are allergic rhinitis, atopic dermatitis, allergic asthma, and food allergies and drug allergies. While most allergies present with mild local or mild to moderate generalized signs and symptoms, the most severe form of allergic reaction is anaphylaxis, which is a life-threatening condition. Number one, if you have allergic rhinitis, you will present a runny nose or stuffy nose, sneezing, red, itchy, and watery eyes with a variable swelling around the eyes. Remember, hay fever is the seasonal type of allergic rhinitis, which is usually due to flowers pollen during the windy season. The non seasonal type is also called pineal allergic rhinitis, it's usually caused by animal dangers. Number two, if you have a topic dermatitis, which is a form of eczema, you can present the following symptoms skin dryness, itchiness or pruritus, and inflamed skin, and sometimes raw and sensitive skin from scratching. It's common in young children before five, but can occur at any age. For some people, it appears and then clears up for a time, in for several years, before flaring again. Number three, food allergy. Born more than 170 foods were identified to cause allergies. Majority are caused by the big nine, which are milk, eggs, nuts, fish, crustaceans, shellfish, weeds, soy, and sesame. For those that know sweet food allergy, Strict avoidance of these offending food is recommended to prevent potentially life-threatening reactions. As we continue, we recommend you to share this information with friends and colleagues. And if not subscribed yet, subscribe now and hit notification bell. But remember, in theory, any food can cause anaphylaxis. What is anaphylaxis then? As mentioned previously, Anaphylaxis is the most severe form of allergic reaction. Anaphylaxis is a medical emergency that can lead to sudden, life-threatening respiratory failure. It's characterized by the following symptoms. Difficulty in breathing, blue skin also called cyanosis, body swelling, low blood pressure. At some level, the very low blood pressure which has with associated signs and symptoms is called anaphylactic shock. As we talk about anaphylaxis, it's very understand alongside measure and various mechanisms that intervene in allergic reactions. In 1963, two British physicians, Robert Coombs and Philip Gell, classified four different types of allergic reactions, type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4. Type 1 allergic reaction, also called type 1 hypersensitivity or immediate hypersensitivity. In this type, symptoms appear immediately only after a few seconds to minutes after exposure to an allergen. Remember, an allergen is anything that can cause allergy, food, drug, pollen, and so on. An anaphylactic reaction, as mentioned here, is an example of type 1 hypersensitivity and the most severe form of allergic reaction. In this type of allergy, when exposed to an allergen, your body produces certain types 
of antibodies called IgE. IgE antibodies are produced by type of white blood cells called B cell when the body is first exposed to an antigen. Production of IgE is, an, is activated by a subtype of T lymphocyte cells known as TH2. When produced, IgE binds to the receptors. Receptors are located on mast cells and basophils. The first exposure is usually asymptomatic, but the body is now sensitized. Upon the second exposure to the similar allergens and to the IgE and the body's molecules, which then together bind on the receptors on the mast cells, triggering a signaling cascade that induces the release by mast cells of histamines and other inflammatory chemicals, mainly prostaglandins, leukotrienes, dispensable for, for allergic reactions. When released, these chemicals called blood vessel dilation and increase in blood vessel walls permeability. Stimulation of sensory nerves, increase in mucus secretion and muscle spasm. This reaction can lead to mild to severe allergic reactions already mentioned different types of allergic disease. So, for instance, in anaphylaxis, extensive blood vessel dilation leads to low blood pressure and anaphylactic shock with an increase in blood vessel walls permeability leading to the body swelling. Bronchospasm lead to difficulty in breathing, which is worsened by increase in mucus secretions. Vomiting, abdominal cramping, and sometimes diarrhea and severe allergic reactions such as anaphylaxis are due to the mass of spasm increasing the gastrointestinal motility. And here, remember, the reactions are immediate within second two minutes after the contact with an allergen. But there is also a late response due to the subsequent tissue infiltration with arrival of eosinophils and other inflammatory cells. It's important to note that people who have been sensitized to a specific allergen may also react to other substances that contain a similar antigen. This is called cross-reactivity. For example, people who react to birch pollen may also react to some fruit and vegetables such as potatoes and apples. Consumption of which can cause itching and swelling of lip and oral cavities. Medication cross-reactivity is also common. If you have allergy to certain drugs, it's better you consult your doctor before taking any drug. The second Types of allergic reaction, it's also called cytotoxic hypersensitivity. In this type, symptoms appear after many two hours. The antibodies involved are IgG and IgM. The antibodies damage the body cells by activating the complement system of the immune system. This type of reaction usually appears in patients suffering from some immunological disease such as autoimmune disease, hemolytic anemia, good pasture syndrome, myasthenia gravis, and so on. The third type of allergic reaction or type 3 hypersensitivity is the immune complex mediated. In this type, symptoms set in after several hours. It's found in diseases such as lupus, serum sickness, and so on. Type 4. Hypersensitivity, also called delayed hypersensitivity, seems to set in hours to days later. It's usually found in long term infections such as TB and fungal infections. But practically speaking, most allergies are due to type 1 and sometimes type 2 hypersensitivity reactions. Risk factors for allergies are genetic and environmental. Family history of allergy is a, high risk, is a high risk factor and it's explained by genetic factors due to mutations involved in the immune system. In fact, allergy tends to run in two families. High exposure to professional allergens such as pollen in farmers and food allergens, remember the big nine. But it's believed that early childhood exposure to bacterial and viral infections suppress THT and therefore protect against allergic disease. This theory known as hygiene hypothesis implies that living in a too sterile environment is a risk factor for allergic disease. This theory partly explains the high prevalence of allergies in developed countries. 
Diagnosis of allergic disease is usually based on signs and symptoms and patient's history. However, some tests can be performed to identify potential allergens. Among them, the skin quick tests or the intradermal tests where small amounts of common allergens are introduced into the skin and local reactions are observed. A blood test called allergen specific serum or IgE test is performed when skin tests are not possible. In this case, patients' blood sample containing IgE is tested for binding to common allergens. If binding occurs, the patient is allergic to that allergen. The management of allergic disease starts by allergic disease diagnosis and if possible, allergen identification is described previously. Once the disease is diagnosed and allergens are identified, the rest of management has two goals. The goal number one is the treatment of allergic disease symptoms, signs and complications. The goal number two is avoidance of the allergen at all costs. For mild to moderate allergic reactions, antihistamines, mast cell stabilizer, corticosteroid, leukotriene modifiers can be prescribed. For allergic rhinitis, nasal irrigation can also be performed. The use of normal saline, nasal drop, is a common form of nasal irrigation. For severe allergic reaction like anaphylaxis, an immediate injection of epinephrine is required. Other measures to treat anaphylaxis are IV steroid support difficulty in breathing. Allergens can be avoided by the following tips. Tip number one, staying indoors on dry, windy days. Tip number two, wear a face mask if you go outside. Tip number three, remove clothes when you've worn outside and shower to remove pollen from your skin and hair. Tip number four, avoid to hang laundry outside. Pollen can stick to sheets and towels. Tip number five, Close doors and windows at night or at any other time when pollen counts are at the highest. Tip number seven, use air conditioning in your house and car. Tip number eight, clean full floors often. Tip number nine, avoid gardening, lawn mowing and weed pulling. These activities can stir up allergens. Tip number ten, discuss with your doctor for more tips. People who cannot avoid allergens may benefit from immunotherapy. In immunotherapy, patients are injected weekly with gradually increases dosage of the allergen, starting with the tiny amount, reducing a reaction to an allergen. This process desensitizes the immune system, but it may take several years to complete. If you are at risk of allergy, try to stay away from allergy triggers. A potentially life-threatening reaction is frightening whether it happens to you or other people close to you or your children. Developing an anaphylaxis emergency action plan can help you put your mind at ease. Working with your healthcare provider to develop a written step-by-step -step plan, what to do in the event of a reaction, and share the plan with your children, teachers, and school nurses Making sure your company and your school officials are aware of your risk and your children's propension to allergies and that they have an allergy emergency kit. It's very important, it can save lives. But always remember, the best way to prevent allergies is to identify and avoid the offending allergen at all costs. And Dr. Eric, this channel is aimed to deliver information that promotes health and holistic wellness. All the information provided on this channel is held for educational purposes. Wow. If not subscribed yet, remember to subscribe now and activate notifications. Do not forget to like, comment, and share videos with friends. Thank you for watching this video on allergies. See you in the next video soon. Funny. They sit there being just mental because you're trying things And they just want you to settle and do the right thing So get a good job, don't slack off Wake up every morning, make a good impression on your boss Don't do anything that I wouldn't do And when you're making money, make sure you